All right, people, what's going on? Seahawks took care of business today, and when I say they took care of business, I think that's the exact perfect phrase to use with what this team did today because um, you, you go into this game and you're playing a team that you know is not that good, you know you're better than, but you're getting their best punch. And I think today you did. At the very least, you got their hardest punch. Maybe it wasn't literally their best punch because... There, there are positive things and negative things about playing with your hair on fire, and that's what I think Arizona did today. They played with their hair on fire, which is why, especially on defense early in that game, there was very little for us to do, but you also had things like the uh, two first-half offsides penalties, So, and I think three total throughout the whole game. So you're getting the strongest punch from Arizona. They're holding your offense down pretty well through the first two and a half quarters. They're, they're um, throwing some stuff at you on offense. Now, for the most part, you're withstanding that. It's just not that good of an offense, and you match up pretty well with it. So that stuff's all good, but Arizona is making the game ugly enough to where they could sneak a win. And you get to that midway point in the third quarter when Arizona's actually taking the lead, and it feels like everything's kind of going against you, and it feels like this is going to be a really frustrating game where... You swear you should have won by three touchdowns, but a little thing happens here, a little thing happens there, and suddenly somehow you lose the game by three or four points, and you just spend the rest of your week thinking, how did that happen? And they don't let it happen. They absolutely take care of business with three absolute stone-cold touchdown drives straight to end the game, to absolutely shut the door, make it impossible for Arizona to even conceive of actually winning this one. Just absolutely shut the door in a way that Seahawks teams sometimes really struggle to do. And to see them not even give Arizona a chance to get the ball back down one score late in that game, it was it was beautiful. After a game where the offense had to work very hard, the offense spent a lot of this game working very hard to get anything. Arizona's defense was, like I said playing probably a little bit above their heads because of the circumstances. They um, had basically their full fleet of players on the defensive side of the football as well because of said desperation. And yet, you're able to settle it down. You're able to take control of that game on the road, play a more disciplined game than your opponent on the road, and you win by two scores. I know this was a close game all the way through, but winning this game by two scores... That says a lot to me, and if there was any doubt in your mind that this team wasn't good, it's time to get rid of it. Defense, defense. look, they, they did one thing badly this game. Unfortunately, it was tackling, and because they struggled to tackle, they gave up a lot of third downs that they didn't need to be given up. They gave up some third down and longs, third down and mediums, where the play is there to be made. Arizona's throwing most everything short. In front of the sticks, you come up, make the tackle, and there's not much they're going to be able to do. And I saw a lot of missed tackles out there. Um, we had uh, Jordan Brooks. We had uh, Ryan Neal miss some, I believe. I mean, pretty much everybody, it felt like. Quentin Jefferson missed one. We got very lucky there that there was a penalty on Arizona on that play that, that almost turned a third and 18, I think, into a first down. So the tackling... It looked like preseason football. It looked like the preseason Seahawks came back to life for a second. But other than that, this defense played out of their mind against, like I said, a desperate team. All right. Um, Kyler was able to do a little bit of damage with his legs, but you were mo you were able to prevent it from being like a game-breaking kind of thing where it, it decided the game or something like that. Um, he was able to bust a few, but he was never able to bust... Up, you know, enough to actually keep drives going. And 35 passing attempts for Kyler. So 35 passing attempts for Kyler, five sacks, losing 35 yards. So on 40 dropbacks that ended with either an attempt or a sack, you gave up a net of 140 yards. <coughs> That's winning football. That is Big time winning football when you can completely neutralize the passing attack. Not give up anything big, not give up anything over the top. DeAndre Hopkins was back and you barely would have noticed it. I mean, um, four catches. He had one big play in this game, the 
first drive where, for some reason, you've got linebackers trying to cover Hopkins. He gets free for a touchdown. I think it was Brooks' fault. He needed to, he didn't pass that off right. But uh, made Maffe look bad. I don't think it was Maffe's fault. But anyway, regardless, you didn't notice D-Hop out there for the most part other than that one specific play. Um, they, they, they ran the ball okay. But a lot of that was mitigated by, like, actually one of the longest runs that Kyler had. He fumbled at the end of the play, so that kind of neutralizes that. And other than that, you're getting pressure on Kyler. We we got a ton of pressure in this game. The first half, we couldn't get sacks, but as this game went on, those pressures started to turn into sacks. Nwosu played a great game, incredible game. Irvin had a sack, so... Uh, Mafe too, by the way, shout out to Boye Mafe. I thought he played a pretty good game as well. And there you go. You, you have a all around awesome defense. And I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The turnaround those guys has had is just, just incredible. Uh, you, you can see where it comes from. It's not like this is just random. I've kind of alluded to this before, but what is going on with this defense right now makes sense. We're using some more bare fronts. We're not doing the two man fronts all the time in this game. I, feel like I saw barely any of that. I'm going to have to go back and look to be sure, but I feel like I didn't see very much of it. And the players are just playing better. Uh, Ryan Neal had another really nice game, I thought. Um, nothing nothing over the top this time. Like, he didn't have an interception, but he did force the fumble, which was nice. And he had other good plays beyond that. Um, not, not the best game that Kobe and Tariq have ever had, but I still thought they played fine. Tariq gave up the touchdown to Zach Ertz, but... You know, uh, whatever. I, I don't think he did anything terribly wrong on that play, so I'm, I'm not I'm not really criticizing him for it. Kobe, look, my condolences to Kobe Bryant right now. He has now been robbed of two interceptions. At least the one today was a good call, though. The one on a the illegal contact on Quandre Diggs that was actually a good call, and he got screwed out of a forced fumble. I don't know how that's not a football move, but whatever. It's not my league, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my condolences go to Kobe Bryant. He's in there trying to make plays, trying to stick his nose in there and, you know, make plays on the ball. And he is doing it. And now somebody's just out to get him, be it the referee or his teammate or somebody's out to get him right now, I guess. But um, uh, Kobe got picked on a little bit in coverage, admittedly, and... It, it just ended up not really amounting to much because every time they would give up a play, they would make a big play to kind of make up for it. Arizona scored on their first drive and did not score again until the game basically felt like it was over. Um, and they didn't even get into field goal range once that whole middle of the game, I don't think. And they had some opportunities dropped in their lap. That's a crazy thing, right? Like, we would get them in third and long, and then we'd miss a bunch of tackles, give it up, and the drive would stay alive in a you know, in a situation where you would, you, you wouldn't expect it. It wasn't necessarily anything you did. And yet Arizona is not even coming close to scoring in this game. So awesome job by this defense. And I know it's not an amazing Arizona offense, but it's got talent. It can do some things. And they did a great job, I think, taking advantage of the weaknesses Arizona has in the interior of their offensive line. Nwosu dominated his matchup pretty much throughout. And you get the result that you do. So, great job by this defense. Very little I can take away from them. Just work on the tackling. But on the other hand, the fact that you played this well and had this good of a result without tackling well, that kind of speaks volumes, right? Uh, offense, uh, look, it, it was it was hard. Arizona's defense, they they made life hard for us today. They did. Credit to them. Uh, they were able to take advantage of some of our weaknesses on the interior offensive line. They were able to um, uh, really, especially early early in that game, take away the downfield passing. They, they, they did a lot of things without compromising themselves in other areas. Lockett and Metcalf not really getting open. And those are not great Arizona cornerbacks. Uh, Byron Murphy and Marco Wilson, not not the greatest players, but... This is the second time this year where we played Arizona and it seemed like they actually played really well. And partially, Lockett and Metcalf, you, you would look at them and say, hey, they're playing injured, so that's part of the reason why they're not getting open as much. But um, 
yeah, the Arizona, I think, did a really good job on both of those guys. They gave up a lot to the tight ends. They kind of always do. Even the announcers <clears throat> for the game today were kind of talking about how uh, Arizona was just basically allowing tight ends to get wide open constantly in the flat, and we kept taking advantage. And we even used it to break their back at the end of the game. But it, it was tough. And, and despite what I said about what they were doing to take away our downfield passing attack, it was a struggle to run the ball for a little bit there. Um, they were getting some okay pressure on Geno. It, it didn't really affect him that much, I don't think. But they were making life hard. And when it got to that third quarter, there was a point in this game, early in the third, where, I'm sorry, but there's no other way to put it, Geno looked a little shook. Geno looked off his game. Geno looked unsettled. The pick six was bad, obviously. He should have been able to see Zayvon Collins back there. He didn't. Just a, just a bad read. Um, there was uh, the two sacks he took back-to-back. -to -back. Both those sacks probably could have at least gotten the ball away. That that was a big sequence, by the way, because that was a second and two that turned into a fourth and long. So, yeah, it's uh, it was tough. Uh, there, there were se several plays in this game where the... Um, uh, Play clock got down to like two or one seconds, which was allowing the uh, Cardinals to time the snap. It, it was it was tough. And there was a point in this game where I even kind of thought to myself, man, Gino looks a little more like the New York Jet Gino. He looks a little more like the Gino that people knew about before this year. He was starting to lose the plot a little bit. He missed a couple throws. He had a throw in the end zone to Metcalf that should have been picked. But... The thing about it that I'm taking away from this is he came back. After a really brutal sequence where he takes the set two sacks in a row, throws the pick six, uh, he has a couple other negative plays. He had the fourth down shovel pass, which I know a lot of people were bagging on that play call. I'm actually not really going to do it. I like the play call. I like it when this offense tries to do stuff to take um, opposing defenses by surprise. Players just got to execute a little bit better. You know, there, there was a rough sequence in there for him to gather himself and after that pick six play basically perfect football for the last quarter and a half is phenomenal. Because everybody has bad moments in games. Everybody has these rough <clears throat> rough patches in a game, right? Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, they, they have moments in games like this too. But when you compare those guys to the lesser quarterbacks in the league, I think the big concern is when you have those bad moments, are you able to bounce back from them? And I was wondering, what is Geno going to do now that he's getting rattled a little bit in this game? And the answer was he he drove you down for three long touchdown drives in the third and fourth quarter. And it kind of blew me away because he, he, he got it back. He was completely off his game, rattled. He was not hitting his check down. There were both sacks he took, the check down was wide open. He didn't take it for who knows what reason. The first down's right there. But then he basically starts playing perfect football. He converts a third and long to uh, Tyler Lockett. And from then on, it was basically perfect football. Maybe one questionable decision where he tried to hit Disley when um, the defender was right there. It was going to be a one-yard gain at most, and it was almost a disaster, but... He, he was making plays with his legs. He was using he was uh, getting up to the line with 20 seconds left on the play clock so he could change the play. And um, that's my main takeaway from this game. Gino lost it and then he got it back, which I mean we, we've kind of seen it a little bit earlier this year, like maybe in the Giants game he didn't start the best, but he finished strong. Um, I, I feel like in this game it was more extreme. Because he was genuinely playing bad for a little bit there. He made some very bad plays. And then he found a way to find himself. So, I really wanted to shout that out here because I know it wasn't Gino's best game. But I was really interested to see how he was going to respond to adversity. And he responded as well as you can. Basically, like I said, those last three drives may as well be perfect football. Uh, he wasn't necessarily helped by the play calling. I will say that Waldron did not have his best game. I don't mind the cute plays, but we can't run screens. The pick six came on a screen. 
every time we try to run a screen, it seems like things go bad. Don't run those kinds of screens, please. Run the kinds of screens to like the tight ends on the bootlegs. Those work. My God, they work today. They work. I feel like you could have run that play every single time. And I don't know if Arizona would have ever stopped it. So we got the tight ends involved, of course. I think they had a like 10 combined catches. Really good game for all three of them, I think. Uh, Colby was quiet, but he's always he, he's he's never going to completely blow up. He's a third string tight end. Uh, shout out to Noah Fant, by the way. I, I thought to myself before the game, this is a great opportunity for two guys, Noah Fant and Dwayne Eskridge, because of the injuries to Metcalf, Lockett, and especially at, um, um, Goodwin. And Fant absolutely took advantage. He leading receiver. And he actually did it without the receivers necessarily playing badly. Lockett and Metcalf both had five catches and a touchdown. They both played fine. Metcalf's one missed target was a uh, <clears throat> underthrown ball. So I, I think that you you saw what Fant can do. And this was a great matchup for him. And I said to myself, look, I like Fant. He's doing some cool stuff in this offense. But I want to see him have a big game just in terms of like, stats in terms of yards show me that you can be that big play threat as a tight end and today he was almost 100 yards broke their backs with a 50 yarder and um yeah he took advantage of the opportunity now Eskridge did not but uh, I don't even know how much he played um I know he got targeted twice no catches so yeah I guess we're just gonna stick to the highlight of Fant uh props to Lockett and Metcalf for it, it was a tough game for them, but they both managed to scrounge up five catches and a touchdown. I think that's big. Disley had some nice catches in this game, converted a third down. Uh, Ken Walker, it, it was tough for a while. And I will say this, too many touches. He touched the ball like 29 times today. Please don't break the new toy. But that being said, as this game went on, he absolutely wore down that defense. And by the end, he was able to get what he needed. So there, there is a reason why you keep pounding the ball. I would say... Don't forget to pound the ball with Travis Homer and DJ Dallas a little bit. But <clears throat> you saw the effect of all those rushing attempts as this game went on. There was a big difference in us running the ball early versus us running the ball late. Other than that, man, I mean, it just... I know it wasn't a perfect game, but overcoming what you had to deal with in terms of what Arizona was playing for. Playing for to save their season, playing at home, all these things going for them... For you to find a way to play so well defensively outside of one factor and for the offense to play pretty much perfect football for the last quarter and a half to put the game away, it, it was special. That sequence at the end of this game was special. Um, special teams were good. Matt Myers continues to have his big bounce back year. Uh <laughs> I, I think the uh, what Jason Myers is doing so far this year is a great argument to the idea of kicking, kicking in this league being mostly random. Um, there is no correlation between what Myers did last year and what he did this year. So uh, good for him, though. Good for him. It, it's been very useful. In, in this game, that field goal was hugely significant. So, yeah, there, w there were some frustrations on offense, like I said. You, you had the... Uh, some of the play calling was not as sharp as it could have been. We really got to either learn how to, how to run screens or just not run screens ever. I will say that. But um, I still like most of the stuff we're doing on that side of the ball. I liked all the uh, stuff with tight ends to the flats that we were running because Arizona, they, uh, they more than maybe any other team really can't stop it. So good stuff, good vibes. Really, really encouraged by what I saw from Gino from a mental standpoint. Um, coming back from the way that game was going midway through. And hey, Arizona's basically buried now. You can forget about them, I think. Uh, I actually just saw the Rams lose over here, so that's nice. And uh, life, life is good, man. Things are looking up in the division. Got a very interesting game next week. I'm going to be streaming in probably, I don't know, an hour, and a, hour, hour and a half. We're going to go through some uh, post-game stuff. And see what can be said about this really, really impressive game to me. Despite the sloppiness, despite the little things that could have been done better, I'm very impressed with the way this team bounced back. And that's the main thing I'm going to stick to going forward. All right. I'll see you guys on stream later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think. 
Good game. We got a good team. We got a pretty well-rounded team, I think. Just got to keep it going. All right. Catch y'all later.